Welcome everyone. My name is Mary Alice Berg. I'm your moderator tonight for the Lake Forest session. Um, I am going to start out with just a couple announcements from IECAC, which is the organization that planned this whole event. Um, I made myself a script on Microsoft Word, so I'm pulling that up right now. Um, hello, everyone. Welcome to the Virtual College Exploration for All Illinois Students, sponsored by the Illinois Association for College Admissions Counseling and StriveScan. My name is Mary Alice Berg, and I will be your facilitator for the Lake Forest session today. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. My audience members can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions the presenters at any time during the presentation. So we could be tight on time at the end. So don't wait till the end to send questions. Go ahead and do it throughout the whole session. Um, your audience member cameras and microphones are off. So the panelists cannot see or hear you. The only way to communicate with them is through that Q&A box. And this was one of many sessions that IACAC offered over the last few weeks. You can check out um, the full schedule of events and watch all of our previous sessions sessions on our website, which is iacac.org. And then this presentation is being recorded tonight and will be available on that same website, iacac.org, um, within about a week. So I am going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to turn it over to my presenters. Good luck, Lake Forest. All right, so thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, we really appreciate it. We know this is a very busy time of year and a very difficult time for, for many of you. And so we really appreciate you taking 45 minutes to spend with us this evening because we know um, how much everybody has going on in their lives right now. My name is Mike Cohen. I'm Director of Admission and Strategic Development here at Lake Forest College. Uh, I work with um, our entire Illinois recruitment team as, as well as our entire team as, as, as you can imagine, but specifically with the Illinois recruiters that we have, which so many of you, um, We'll be working with, with our staff through, throughout. I'm joined by a couple of my colleagues today, um, and they'll introduce themselves as, as they speak today, as well as one of our favorite students. Um, specifically, for those of you who are at Highland Park, Stevenson, New Trier, Deerfield, anywhere around the North Shore, um, I specifically work with those schools in addition to, to my role in the office. Um, one of the things that we do is we break out Illinois uh, in between six different recruiters. Um, in fact, with half of our students coming from the state of Illinois, we have about half our recruitment staff covering the state of Illinois. So everybody from the state of Illinois has a specific recruiter. Um, and so three of us are here to talk to you uh, today. So the way this session is gonna break out is we're gonna give you a, a general sense of Lake Forest as a whole. Some of you may be more familiar with it. Um, some of you may be less so. So we're gonna start with just a general um, overview of, of, of who we are and, and the type of campus that we are. And then we'll talk about what makes us unique and what makes Lake Forest what it is. Um, we will have one of our current students, as I mentioned, one of our favorite students is here. She is. Uh, Isabella is one of our uh, Illinois students. She'll talk to you for about five minutes um, and then we'll talk kind of nuts and bolts of financial aid and admissions before we, we open it up for questions. We'll be answering questions throughout um, via the chat, but then at the end we'll leave time to answer questions that are kind of broad for, for everyone um, that, that will serve everyone. So that's kind of the plan for, for the next 40 minutes or so. Uh, and, and again, we're thrilled that you're joining us. So uh, Lake Forest at a glance, just to give you a sense of, of who we are. Um, we are just north of the city. So for those who are from the north suburbs, um, chances are, even if you haven't been to Lake Forest College, you've been up this way. For those of you who might be in the western suburbs or might be in the city, um, we're about 30 miles north on the commuter rail of the metro. So being 30 miles north of Chicago allows us to have access to the city in, in ways that allow our students to take advantage of, of the city um, for both internships and careers, as well as just for fun. Um, while at the same time, they're able to have that, that community at Lake Forest College, that tight-knit community um, that really allows them to, to get to know one another in, in both a, a global context and a social context. Uh, I mentioned about half our students are in-state. That also means that half, about half our students are out of state. So one of the things that makes Lake Forest unique is the fact that um, for those of you who are staying closer to home and are staying in the state of Illinois, you're still going to have a national and international environment when you come to Lake Forest. Our students come from 43 states and 96 countries. Um, and what makes it special for us is that when you have 1,600 students, you really do get to know those students who are from 43 states and 96 countries. And that's something that I know Isabel will be able to speak to a little bit. Um, but the reality is by not going far from home, you're still able to meet people from all over. And one of the things I always joke about with some of our local students is the fact that once they graduate Lake Forest and, and they're really traveling around the country, um, 
wherever they go, they can typically find a couch to sleep on. So, so that's always a uh, that's always a fun thing for our students. All of our students can earn up to thirty thousand dollars in scholarships. Melanie's going to talk a little bit about how we've changed that in terms of allowing test optional students to identify what their merit scholarships are going to look like. So, whether students apply test optional or not, they can earn up to thirty thousand dollars in scholarships. That doesn't include things like our visit grant or or need based aid that can be stacked on top of that thirty thousand dollar in scholarships. And every year, we are. Uh, have a placement rate for, for careers or graduate school over 95%. This past year it was 96%, but uh, every year I've been at Lake Forest and, and I've been, this is my fifth year at Lake Forest College. Uh, we've always been over 95% in terms of career placement. Um, you know, the, the last thing that I'll say is, as Emily goes into to what makes us unique is, you know, one of the things that we really focus on is, is the individual student and, and making sure that we meet the needs of our individual students. And so we've been nationally ranked for a variety of things that, that, really result in our ability to provide an affordable education for students that meet their individual needs. And our hope is that as you, you know, engage with this presentation tonight, that will begin to, to come clear. And that's where I'll let Emily talk more about kind of how we do that in our unique environment. Awesome, thank you, Mike. Um, as Mike mentioned, my name is Emily Grimm. I am one of the Associate Directors of Admission here at Lake Forest College. Um, and I primarily recruit our students from the Northwest suburbs um, of Illinois. I also work with our students from Minnesota and Wisconsin. So um, kind of going into some, some things about what makes Lake Forest a really unique experience. Um, you know, there's four essential pillars and in, in, as the best way to describe them that really kind of help stand us apart from other small private liberal arts colleges. Um, we have a very strong pragmatic approach to the liberal arts, which means we're basically going to take um, your classroom experience and apply that to the real world. So we'll talk a little bit more about each of these in depth, but just to kind of give the overview for that. Uh, we have a strong emphasis on career preparation, so making sure that we're not just helping you through um, to finding that right job and finding that right career, but helping you along the way to uh, network and make those connections so that you can um, ultimately find that career and that passion for yourself after graduation. We have a strong emphasis in utilization of the city of Chicago. So we'll talk a little bit more about how we use that and, and some of the exciting opportunities that uh, come with being so close to the city. And then we'll talk a little bit about the diversity on campus. And this is something that we're really proud of and something that we um, really want our students to know um, that we have available here. So going through, again, as I mentioned, that pragmatic approach. So basically what this means is you're you're going to get that liberal arts education experience while you're here. So you'll be taking classes, um, not just within your major, but you'll also be taking classes to help you develop a lot of soft skills that you are going to need in the professional world. So to be able to communicate and read and write and, um, you know, how to how to relate to other people. And so you're you're going to learn all the theories that you need in your, uh, you know, future careers. But then what we encourage our students to do is to actually apply that to real world situations. And with that application really comes where that learning and that understanding of your topics kind of comes into play. So we actually require an experiential learning component as part of our Forrester Fundamental Curriculum, which is your general education curriculum. And this can be done in a number of different ways, internships, research, study abroad. And then I'll talk a little bit more about our in the loop or activate program. And once we get to Chicago, um, but internships are a huge part of, of the academic experience. And it's a great way for you to kind of figure out what career path is going to work for you um, or to help kind of narrow down some of the things that you may be looking for. Um, so students are able to do up to three uh, internships for credit here at the college, and you'll work really closely with our Career Advancement Center to help identify potential opportunities for internships for you. Um, research is another really big thing here too. Students are able to participate as early as the summer going into their sophomore year through our Richter Scholars Program. Um, and what's really nice is that our students are able to actually do research projects, um, you know, at the graduate level too, alongside with in our partnership with Rosalind Franklin University, which we'll talk a, a little bit further on later on. Um, 
study abroad is another really exciting thing. So if you wanted to go abroad and, and you know, study in a different country or do an internship in a different country, um, this is definitely a cool opportunity for you to do so. Your financial aid will travel with you. Um, and we have a number of different programs throughout the entire world that um, are, some are tailored to specific majors, some are tailored to internships or academics or community service based. Um, and those are definitely a really fun way to, to come take your learning to a whole new level. Again, as I mentioned, that focus and the emphasis on careers. So as I mentioned with the internships, so it's a really good part and a really good opportunity for you to figure out what career path might be the best fit for you. So, you know, when you come into college and you're looking through, ooh, uh, wow. When you're looking through all of the different programs and, and everything and you select your major, there's a really uh, good chance that it's a broad major that will help you to kind of figure out so many different career path options within that major. So what's nice about our Career Advancement Center is we've actually gotten a lot of national recognition for our Career Advancement Center. Um, and it's a really great place that we're really proud to have on campus. So you are assigned a career advisor from the very first day. Um, you don't have to meet with them day one. We know that uh, students have a lot to kind of get through within that first week of adjusting to campus and everything. But you are assigned that counselor who is there to kind of start talking to you about what it is you may want to do with your degree and what those milestones look like as you progress through. We also have 11 professional staff, which is twice the national average. Um, so again, it, it really comes down to having that individual individualized attention as you go through and making sure that we're um, working with you as a student on, on your own terms with your own kind of passion and motivation to figure out what it is uh, that you ultimately want to do. We have these pathways and then rather than just walking into the office and saying, I want to find an internship or I want to find a job um, and kind of walking away with like some paperwork and things like that, you actually will join these pathways and there's pathway advisors that Again, you work very individually with, um, and you're, you have these milestones as you go through. So trying to make sure that, are you building your resume? Are you doing internships? If you're considering graduate school, what, what do you need in terms of application material? So is that a shadowing experience? Is that healthcare experience? Um, you know, kind of talking through that whole process. And then in addition to those pathways and that individual attention, we have a lot of events throughout the year. And two in particular, I think are extremely um, beneficial to our students. Um, we have speed networking, which we held virtually um, last week. And this is kind of like speed dating. Uh, so it's a great opportunity for you to start connecting with potential employers if you're looking for a job um, or as an internship. And if you're not quite ready to start looking for that job just yet, it does kind of serve as a great way for you to build your interview skills, you know, start getting comfortable with the interview process, um, or even just building that elevator pitch as you go through. So, um, I wanted to kind of focus on this slide a little bit too, because this shows a lot of or some of the areas and places that our students have gone after graduation. Um, again, as Mike mentioned, that 96% after graduation is really, uh, it, really impressive. And so for students that are looking to have outcomes and kind of making sure that you're going to have that job after graduation, um, a lot of our students like to stay local or go far away totally up to you. So again, strong base of the Chicago area companies and you can re-see those there, but for the graduate schools, I wanna make a, a note that these aren't the only schools that our students are getting into. Um, these, are, these are just the local ones that our students have gotten into. So DePaul, U of I, uh, Loyola, Northwestern, Rosalind Franklin. I mean, these are wonderful graduate schools that are preparing our students for whatever it is um, their next career path is going to be. I'm going to toss it over to Mike, who's going to talk a little bit about our alumni. Perfect. Thank you, uh, Emily. And so one of the things that, that we really pride ourselves on is the ability for students not to just get the, the liberal arts education, but be able to, to make a career out of whatever it is that they want to do. And so as a result of, of our location and, and our ability to be near the city and have strategic partnerships um, around the city, it's allowed us to not only have students be able to study um, within the liberal arts, but also allow us to have things like health professions programs uh, and, and economics, business and finance because of our tie to the city and, and our tie to partners around the city. And so um, 
one of the things that that our students uh, will will consistently tell you time and time again is the fact that their liberal arts skills have enhanced their ability to be successful in their fields. And so for our students uh, that you know really end up being successful at not only at Lake Forest, but but in their careers, a lot of times they'll talk about how the education at Lake Forest and the opportunities, um, in addition to things like the small class sizes, allowed them to be successful. So the first alum that, that we've, we've, we've chosen to, to show you is Jessica Dudley. So Jessica um, was actually a neuroscience philosophy major. And so one of the things that we really focus on, like I said, is for students who are interested in STEM and, and, and the health professions, um, is that ability to find that pathway, because you can't major in pre-med. You can't major in, in a lot of pre-health fields. What you can do is take the pre-health route that will prepare you to be successful. And that's exactly what Jessica did. So she ended up doing our affiliate program, um, getting her master's in nursing. I mean, is currently a labor and delivery nurse. And, and again, it's her Lake Forest education that allowed her on that pathway. And, and if I'm not mistaken, she's now actually going after a PhD um, uh, in, in nursing as well. So her education continues to this day and she was able to, to find it through, through the neuroscience and philosophy pathway. Likewise, um, you know, I, I mentioned that economics, business, and finance are, are also a focus that, that we have here. And so Michael Rufer, who, who graduated um, recently, he was actually a, a starting guard on our basketball team. So he was a student athlete who was interested in finance. Um, and, and he also jumped onto our entrepreneurship and innovation minor, which had just been created when, um, I think Michael probably would have been a, a junior when that was created. Maybe maybe it was his senior year, um, and so he was able to do internships um, at, at Morgan Stanley uh, and, and work in the city. And he was able to find a, a, an analyst position at, at Allstate Insurance out of college at Lake Forest. Uh, what was unique to his experience was the fact that because even as a student athlete, his career experience and his academic experience came before his sport. He was able to play basketball all four years and be on some very good basketball teams, um, while at the same time also make sure that as he was working through both academics and athletics, he had time for careers, he had time for internships, he had time to, to, to get that job. And so he's been working um, and working in business ever since. So you know, our alumni have, have a commitment to, to their work at Lake Forest. And, and a lot of that goes back to the connections that they make, the connections they have to the city, but it all starts with the professors that they have. Um, at the end of the day, and, and the theme that you will hear over and over again from us at Lake Forest is that at Lake Forest, you always have a person. And whether it was Dr. DeBerman for Jessica, um, whether it was Coach Davis or, or one of our business professors uh, for, for Michael, um, there was always somebody that our students could go to to help them on their path. And, and, and as a result, they've been able to, to hit outcomes that not only did maybe they think they would get to, but in the case of, of our students, even find themselves in positions much quicker than maybe they thought they would get to originally because of the education they had, but at the same time, the investment that people made in them. Thank you, Mike. So let's go talk a little bit about Chicago. And obviously, um, you know, being like local and close to the city of Chicago, you know, you're familiar with the city. Um, you know, might have a good, you know, understanding of all the big touristy things like the Bean and Millennial Park and the, you know, the Field Museum and all of those fun activities. Um, but we actually like to refer to Chicago as our second classroom. Um, and, and so um, what's really great is, is, again, we're 30 miles north, so we're about a one hour train ride, super easy to get into the city. Um, we're a 10 minute walk to the Lake Forest Metro, so our students are constantly going in and out. And then our Center for Chicago programs actually approves over 200 academic trips each year. So these are trips that are taken by a full class and so, you know, um, you're going to find that as a student, you're going into the city pretty regularly. Um, if you're not going for class, you're probably going to go for fun and hang out and go, you know, blow some steam off at, at a game or go get some food or something like that. Um, or just, you know, finding some way to engage in the city in a way that you may not have done previously. Um, we also have this really cool opportunity that's our in the loop residential semester. And so um, this allows students to live in like almost an apartment style um, kind of complex in the city of Chicago. So we have a couple floors in the high rise. You can take classes downtown if you'd like to. Um, and, but, but the most important thing is that you will complete an internship. And so it's kind of nice because it can be that cool transition for you as you're nearing the end of your time at Lake Forest and getting ready to kind of be out and branch out on your own after graduation. 
And then as, as I mentioned earlier, in terms of diversity, we have, our campus is diverse in every sense of the word. And so, you know, again, with 14% of our students being international, 36% of our incoming first year class being first generation, um, you're going to learn from students from all walks of life. So you're you're going to learn about others' experiences. And so I think that this is a really important thing for our students because, um, again, it helps provide that world perspective. And it helps you to really understand um, the differences in where students are coming from and how uh, you can learn from them and they can learn from you. There's a lot of support for our students in that sense too. So we have our Office of Intercultural Relations that does our first connection program. So this is actually a program that's pre-orientation for students um, who may follow, you know, may identify as underrepresented, first generation, um, international students, and basically serves as a really great way to um, build this connection to um, other members of the campus community and adjust to the college experience before diving right into orientation. Um, we also have empowerment groups on campus that are um, really designed as, as opportunities for students to really connect with students who share identities with one another um, and making sure that we're creating that inclusive environment. Again, it's that transition process, social justice initiatives. Our students are very passionate about that social justice, um, making sure that um, they're advocating for themselves and, and their, their colleagues as well. And so it's very active in terms of campus community there. Um, and then obviously the mentoring with, with our international or first generation students. So the support in terms of making sure that we're not just saying we have that diversity on campus, but also um, supporting that, that diversity through a lot of inclus um, inclusive and inclusion, there is my word, um, making sure that we, we support our students in that sense and we're giving them the resources that they need to be successful. So as much in, you know, being so close to, to a lot of where our Illinois students are, are coming from, you know, a lot of students may be thinking, I want to go out to state, I don't want to be close to home, um, you know, but I think that there are a lot of benefits for you to staying close to home, but ultimately you kind of get the whole college experience while being away. So some of the benefits for, for you as a student and, and things that you should consider is, you know, you've got that continued support system. So you have very quick access to your friends and family. You have familiar resources. So, you know, whether that's a doctor or a dentist, you don't have to worry about trying to identify those as you're transitioning through the college experience. Um, again, as I mentioned earlier, you have that familiarity with Chicago and public transportation. So you don't necessarily have to learn all the terminology about the Metra and the L and, you know, the brown line and the pink line and all of those. Um, and also, you know, it's close to home, so it's that familiar sense and, and kind of, you know, something that you're, you're, you can quickly access, but at the same time, that dynamic and that diverse community brings you essentially global perspective. So, you know, you're, you're um, really getting kind of that global um, interaction as you come to campus, but still staying close enough to home where you can go home when you feel like it. And we'll kind of quickly talk about academics because I know I want to get to Melody. <laughs> I'm taking up a lot of time, I'm sorry. Um, but as, as we go through our academics, you know, one of the biggest things for, for us is making sure that our students are able to pursue interest um, beyond just one particular major. So we don't necessarily want to see our students fit themselves into a one singular box, right? So if you have passion across multiple majors, we want our students to be able to pursue those. So um, our students can earn up to two Two majors and one minor or one minor and two majors um, as you or yeah, one major and two minors. There's the other one um, as you go through. And so about a quarter of our students actually do double major. And, and I feel like a lot of our ambassadors do. And you constantly hear from our students saying, I'm a double major in this and that. Um, and they don't necessarily have to be related. So, you know, you may find that you're a neuroscience major with an art minor or something like that. So if, if it's something you're passionate about, we want to make sure that we're able to 
kind of have you pursue that. Um, you can see the top six degrees that we uh, award. Um, again, these are not the only programs that we offer. Definitely take a look at our website and kind of um, see all of the different programs that we offer for students. Um, and then, you know, we have this self-designed major, uh, which is really cool if you're looking for something that maybe we don't necessarily have, um, but that we have the foundational pieces for. Um, and then for first year studies, this is a really, really cool class. It's like your intro to college class, but it goes beyond that in helping you learn more about Chicago, um, but that professor also becomes your first advisor. And so um, that's an important thing because they're going to help you through registering for your classes for your first semester, checking in with you during that first year and making sure that you're kind of adjusting well. And with that, um, I'm going to pass it over to my colleague, Melanie. Thank you, Emily. Good night, everyone. My name is Melanie Sandoval. I am one of the other admissions counselor on staff. I um, specifically work with our some of our sh Chicago students as well as their Rockford area and Lake County area, um, Chain of Lakes area. So if that is you, I am your admissions counselor and I will be connecting with you. Um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about our student organizations that we have on campus and um, along with academically preparing you to, to assure that you are successful in your academic trajectory at Lake Forest College, we want to make sure that you are also having fun while you're there. You know, you're, you're spending your time at college 24-7. Uh, you are basically going to be living there and spending a lot more time there than, than you will at home, essentially, during your time with us. So we want to make sure that you're also fulfilling a lot of your interests that come with, with being the person that you are. Um, on our campus, you'll find over 80 student organizations that are active. Um, these student organizations can be specifically to identity, to interest, to um, talent, and it's just a, um, a various amount over, of organizations that you can be a part of. If there's an organization that, that you want to maybe create and maybe we don't have on campus, we also have a student office that will really help you to assure that you're able to even create your own student organization. And what's cool about our student organizations is that they're student-led and, and really student-focused. So you, as, to, as a student, will have full autonomy of what that organization will look like. Um, more than 50% of our students also participate in some sort of club, intramural, or varsity sport. Um, and at the same time, you will find year-round events, um, all campus-wide events. And even now, although we are virtual this semester, our students are still being super creative and finding ways to still put on events or just ways to continue to keep engaged and touch base with each other. Um, as we were mentioning earlier, our students are from all around the world, literally. So that's a really cool way for them to still continue to engage and see each other's face even through this world pandemic. And I'm actually going to um, pass it over to Isabella so she can talk a little bit to us about her experience. She is a current student at Lake Forest College. So we're definitely a little bit more interested in hearing about her current um, student organizational um, involvement and all the cool facts that, that she has to share with us. Um, so hello, and again, thank you for being here. My name is Isabella Nuno. Um, and again, I'm from Chicago. So the South Side, if you know, it's by Midway. Um, and I come from a CPS background, so Chicago Public Schools. I am a double major in communications and psychology. And I'm co-president of Latinos Unidos. This is my second year um, being one of the leaders for that. Um, that's a cultural club. So it's in addition to the in addition to the office of OIR, we also have other cultural clubs. Um, and I am also co-president of To Write Love on Her Arms, which is a mental health advocacy organization. And I helped restart this club my first year. Um, so interestingly enough, one of the reasons why I chose Lake Forest College was because I knew that there were so many ways to get involved. And I knew that there was an office, so we call it the Gate Center, that was there to help you really start a club if you wanted to. And I knew of this club, To Write Love in Her Arms, and I knew that the person who led it was a senior. So if someone didn't pick it up, it was going to kind of just end until leaders came for it. And I didn't want to see it end. Um, so I was happy to come and kind of restart that and knew that I had the opportunity to do that as soon as I walked in the door. Um, so that was really special to me and just one of the reasons why I came here. Um, and I also want to talk a little bit about um, speed networking, which was mentioned earlier. I participated in this year. Um, so this is my first time participating in it and it was all virtual. Um, so it was a little interesting to get through all of the technical differences than being in person, but it was super interesting and super fun. And I definitely made some connections and learned a lot of different 
fields that you wouldn't even think go with your two majors. Um, I picked some of the two broadest majors that there are. Um, so I'm still kind of trying to figure out what I want to do with those, but I hope to have an internship soon. Um, first generation students were mentioned earlier. I also identify as a first generation student, and I already mentioned that um, I'm a CPS graduate. And the reason why I chose, another reason why I chose Lake Forest College was because I wanted to stay close to family because family is really important to me. But I also wanted to have that independence that you kind of can't get at home all the time. Um, so that's one of the reasons why I wanted to go far, but not far away, if that makes sense. Um, it was an hour that's far enough for me. And I really have enjoyed that experience of being on campus and making all of these connections with other students as well as professors. Um, so one highlight that I have is I kind of knew coming in that I wanted to be somehow involved in psychology or I knew it was an interest of mine. And in my first psychology class was intro to psychology, the actually the chair of psychology, he was my professor. And he kind of just said in class one day, like, who's interested in psychology, being a psychology major, raise your hand. So I remember that I was one of the people that raised my hand. And then the other day I saw him, he was having lunch and he came up to me. He was like convincing me to be a psychology major or talking to me about it. So I thought it was hilarious because I was like, I'm already interested in this. So just that extra push of right away having someone be there for me. And we mentioned this, like having faculty that are there for you, I can list off quite a few. Um, so it's really, it feels really nice, especially when you're new, when you're first generation and you're kind of new and you don't know what you're doing to have all these people support you out of nowhere. Um, and then to also be part of these clubs and kind of find your community, whether it's a sports team or Greek life or whatever it may be, you kind of find your people right away. Um, and that was a really nice, it goes to a nice transition into college, which, is, which isn't always easy for everyone. But when you find those people, you really start to make those connections. And when we say that, you're going to know almost everyone on campus, like it's, we're not lying. Um, I remember that my first visit to campus, it was actually kind of how it's been these few days um, in Illinois. It's been gloomy and rainy and just kind of disgusting outside. So I was like, okay, well, this is not a good day to visit, but I visited anyways. And people on campus who were students already didn't know me were just saying hello to me and like waving at me and acknowledging me and coming from the city I just thought it was so weird because when you're in the city like you have to go places you don't have time to stop and say hello, but at Lake Forest everyone will say hello. Um, so at first it was a little like weird to me but then I was like oh I kind of like this. So I really enjoyed that community aspect that is so I mean it's so deeply rooted in Lake Forest that just visiting like you're gonna see that um, when there's students on campus so that's just some of my highlights and um, yeah, I just think I love it here, clearly. Um, and I'm also involved in the admissions office. Um, but yeah, I think that's that's all. Thank you, Isabella. And, and for everyone else, if you are interested in connecting with uh, a student and even chatting with Isabella a little bit further, you are more than welcome to reach out to your admissions counselor. And we'd be happy to connect you with the current student so you can have that conversation. Um, but now we're going to talk a little bit about scholarships and financial aid. Um, and I briefly want us to look at that grid that is in front of us. So this grid is also available in our on our website under our scholarship tab, um, admissions tab, financial aid scholarship tab. Um, and this grid is awesome for you to get an idea of how much merit-based scholarship you can expect from Lake Forest College. So our merit-based scholarship essentially tra uh, translates to our presidential scholarship. And this presidential scholarship is given to students that apply to Lake Forest College and are within this uh, GPA or, and or test score grid. And I say and or because we're also a test optional school. That means that you don't have to submit a test score to apply to our institution, but instead if you don't submit a test score, we will ask you to do or complete an interview, which again, it'll be with one of your admissions counselor and we can definitely make that um would be a virtual uh, conversation and, and and interview if you are interested in that um something that i definitely want to highlight about our scholarship is that all of our scholarships are renewable a scholarship that is given through lake forest specifically to you so whatever scholarships we actually welcome you in with your freshman year that scholarships will be consistent all four years um, as long as you maintain a solid gpa standing which is above a 2.0 so we know that all of you can definitely do that um, you can count on that merit-based scholarship being there um, in addition to that you're eligible for a visit grant which mike will talk to you a little bit more about down the line but this scholarship or this visit grant is also renewable. So it's two grand that you'll get during your college for visiting us during your college process that will continue to actually um, renew itself every single year till you graduate. So you're looking at about eight grand from us just for visiting us during your college search. So that's a pretty neat deal. Um, and now I really I want to also talk about our uh, FAFSA and financial aid a little bit more in that if you are 
eligible and, and are thinking about filling out the FAFSA, I want to give you a shameless pub to make sure that you go ahead and fill that out. It did open earlier in the month. And just as a reminder, you are required to fill or submit 2019 tax information if you are filling out the FAFSA. Um, over 90% of our students do um, receive some sort of um, financial aid support or help. Our international students are required to fill out the CSS profile. And then if you need that, you can reach out to one of our admissions counselors and we can give that to you. Um, in addition to that, if you are an undocumented student, we are also um, providing financial aid and, and that scholarship for you. Um, and like our other scholarships that are presidential exclusively through Lake Forest College are also available to you, but you just reach out to your admissions counselor and we'll be happy to give you that form that you can fill out. Um, and again, also renewable like all of our other scholarships. And I'm going to talk more about our Forrester flagship program. And then our Forrester flagship program is specifically for students that meet the following four requirements. So you have to be an Illinois graduate student, which I'm pretty sure it's almost everyone on this call, if not everyone on the call. Um, you have to apply to live on campus, so be a residential student, and you have to be eligible for the FAFSA. And once you are, if you are eligible for the FAFSA and you fill it out and you become Pell eligible, which the FAFSA will tell you that if they give you the Pell grant, you'll be Pell eligible, you are, you qualify or automatically qualify for a Forrester flagship program. And we will consider you for this program if you meet all four of the requirements that I just mentioned. And this program is specifically for qualified in-state first year and transfer students, and you all will receive 100% of the college tuition covered in grants and scholarships. Um, so it's just another of one of our scholarships that's also renewable. So if you are offered the scholarship your freshman year, as long as you continue to meet all four of those requirements, including the FAFSA and that uh, Pell Grant eligibility, you can count on that scholarship following you throughout your time with us. Now I'm going to hand it over to Mike to talk to us about those upcoming deadlines. Thanks, Melanie. And, and we'll wrap up here in the last Last few minutes, I want to talk a little bit about deadlines in our, our admissions process because um, obviously COVID has thrown a wrench into some things. And so one of the things that we've always done is had early action, early, early action to and regular decision because we know that students apply at different points. Uh, many of you who are on this call may be thinking early action one with the November one deadline coming up a, a week from, from Sunday. Um, some of you may be thinking early action too. You're not quite ready for November one, but it'll be in before the end of the year. And others may be thinking, I've just started my process. I, I need till February. We want to work with students at, at, at all parts of the funnel. And so as a result, um, what used to happen was our early action one, which is non-binding or early decision one, which is binding. Those students, if they apply by November 1st, they receive their decisions around December 15th. Um, we have done away with that this year. What we have done now is move to rolling admissions because we know some of you have applied and are ready to make decisions now because you want to be done with this process. Others of you are just starting this process because due to COVID, you just haven't had the opportunity to really work through the college process yet. And so you're just starting. We don't want you to be disadvantaged by the process. And most of you are going to be somewhere in between. I want to make my decision today and I need until May 1st. And so as a result, we are rolling those decisions now um, to ensure that students, as soon as they apply within you know, a couple of weeks of having their materials, they'll be able to be notified of their admissions decisions, their merit scholarships, which take their weighted GPAs or their test scores um, will be in the admission letter so that you'll know what a merit scholarship looks like. And if we have a FAFSA in, you would have your financial aid, hopefully within a couple of weeks after you received your admissions decision. What we look for in the application is really the holistic approach to ensuring that um, we have taken into account everything that you have put forth uh, to, to apply to the college. And so uh, as a result, um, we, we take a look at the transcripts that you send. We take a look at uh, test scores if you submit them. We recommend that all of our students interview, um, whether you, you apply with test scores or without. It's always been required for test optional students, though most of our students who test will, will interview as well. We take a look at one, one letter of recommendation, but if you send multiple, we'll look at all of them. Um, and obviously we take a look at the application that you submit. We're on the Common application. So if you're applying to eight schools on the Common app, um, you obviously can add Lake Forest to that list. It's a free application. So you fill out our five minute supplement um, and, and you've applied to the college with your Common app and that supplement. There's no additional essay. For students who are thinking, 
uh, in terms of wanting to just apply to Lake Forest and we're the only common app school, we also have our own application that, that you can utilize to apply. So we know some of you have applied through our application, some of you applied through the common app, others of you may be deciding whether or not you're applying to Lake Forest. Any questions that you have in that process, please do, do reach out to your admissions counselor. We will be as transparent as possible for you uh, because we wanna make sure that we answer everything um, that we can. If you're looking to schedule that interview, you can email your admissions counselor who you can find on our website, um, or you can email admissions uh, at lakeforest.edu and let them know that you wanna schedule an interview. And Andy Keller, who's one of our Illinois counselors who manages our admissions inbox, will get it to the appropriate counselor who will reach out to you about an interview. So as we wrap up here, we really are building for the future. Those of you who have been to campus, you've seen that Brown Hall, which is our $20 million renovation of our largest academic building on campus, is going up and is still planned to be complete by the time all of you would come to campus next year. So we are able to put this building together. The funding is secured. It's being renovated as we speak. Um, well, maybe not as we speak. They may have stopped working for the evening, so they'll get back to it tomorrow. But, but that building will be online. Um, come August 2021 when all of you would start. And so that is going to move the Career Center, Career Advancement Center to the center of campus. So for those of you who are economics, business and finance majors, for those of you who are in politics or history, um, you're gonna be able to in the same building, go to class, talk to your advisor and go to the Career Center. For those of you who are science majors, you're gonna to have to walk, what is about like 50 feet to, to get to, to Brown Hall now. Um, so the point being that we're really centralizing the resources for students on campus with state-of-the-art facilities. And so that $20 million renovation comes off of the $43 million renovation of our science center for state-of-the-art facilities and labs. We've just started our varsity lacrosse team. We already have committed students for our varsity lacrosse team, which we're really excited about. So that, will, that sport will start in the fall of 2021, though they won't play until the spring of 2022. And it'll make it so that we now have 25 division three sports uh, on campus. And so we're really excited about the addition of lacrosse. And I know our students are as well. We also added a turf field and locker rooms to facilitate that. We have our health professions program. This has become a distinctive partnership uh, with Roslyn Franklin, who's in North Chicago. They're about four miles north of us. And, and what this means is that we have graduate level seminars being taught to our undergrads by faculty from Roslyn Franklin. And so they are helping prepare our pre-health majors, as well as our non-pre-health majors who are interested in healthcare uh, for, for careers in the field of, of medicine or in the fields of healthcare. So it could be a computer science student who's gonna do healthcare analytics. They're gonna be covered by the health professions program in the same way as a pre-med student. It also means that we have accelerated programs and joint degree programs with Ross and Franklin. So we have a 3-2 in PA. So students spend their first three years at Lake Forest and then two years and in five years, they've gotten their master's in PA from Roslyn Franklin and their bachelor's from Lake Forest. We have a 3-3 in, in physical therapy. Um, we have a 3-4 a uh, in, in pharmacy. Uh, and we're continuing to build out pathways that, that include a future for, for medicine and, and, and nursing as well, since that is critical to, um, to what Roslyn Franklin is trying to do for healthcare um, in, in Lake County. So we are continuing to build out that program. And so for, for our students who are interested in healthcare, this is gonna be a huge opportunity um, for, for all of them, as well as any of our students who might end up in a healthcare field, even if they're not in a healthcare major. And then finally, we added data science as an interdisciplinary major last fall, because one of the things that we learned was that data science could be paired with anything. Um, and so what we've actually seen is that it's not just computer science and mathematics, it's students in business who are adding a minor or a double major in data science. It's students who are looking at analytics for a career. It could be math majors who might be looking at sports marketing at some point um, who are adding data science because of their interest in sports. So um, we're seeing uh, quite a bit of interest in that as well. And we continue to, to identify programs that students will get excited about. So we are open for visits right now. We know that everything is going on with COVID, but for students who are comfortable, because of our size, we're able to do limited on-campus visits. So we have about six visitors a day um, because we're able to provide tours for about six families per day. It's one family per tour guide, social distancing masks, but we've been able to facilitate that. So if you're comfortable, you can actually schedule an in-person visit, uh, but you can also schedule a virtual visit as well as many of our students are. Regardless of, of the type of visit, you'll earn that $2,000 visit grant that Melanie talked about. So if you enroll in Lake Forest by attending a, a visit virtual or in person, you will receive that visit grant. So we wanna make sure that, that you connect with your counselor and that you have the opportunity to really connect with, with Canvas as well. So with that, we really appreciate you making the time this evening. I know we're about at time. There were a couple of questions that we didn't get to. Um, in terms of academic support and tutoring, um, we have a, a, a robust uh, center for academic success. And so absolutely that exists. And 
not only do you have access to that, but your advisor will also make sure that if there are areas that you're struggling, they're identifying those and helping you find support uh, both academically and with tutoring. So all of our students have access uh, to, to academic support. And then in terms of looking for a job, that, that's where the Career Center comes in. Because of that four-year career advising model, um, our, our career advisors are working with you one-on-one -on -one to really help you identify the jobs in your field, what might be good fits, and then help you work towards internships, putting those puzzle pieces together throughout your experience so that you're not getting to your junior or senior year and saying, okay, what do I do now? You're working through that. Um, as, as you are um, going through that academic experience, so like the students that we showed you uh, before, um, they had access to that. The, the final question that we got was, does the session count towards the $2,000 grant? The answer is yes, we will count this. We hope this doesn't stop you from visiting us virtually and visiting us on campus if you're comfortable. But yes, you will all receive the, the $2,000 visit grant for the session today. What a great way to end, Mary Alice. That is such a great way to end. I'm like, do I get the $2,000 <laughs> as your presenter? Send it to me. <laughs> um, thank you so much for everyone who joined us today. You asked great questions. I hope you learned a lot from like the energy enthusiasm that all the Lake Forest College folks brought tonight. Um, I am going to share my screen one last time. And just say a big old thank you again. Um, when you close this window, there will be a short survey for you to fill out. Any feedback you will provide, we will be very thankful for. And as I mentioned, this uh, recording was, pr uh, this presentation was recorded tonight. So it'll be posted online in about a week. However, you can watch a whole bunch of other presentations that happened over the last few weeks online right now at IACAC.org. Um, thank you so much again for joining us. Great job to my Lake Forest team and uh, good luck with your college search, everyone. Thank you, thank you.